In this section of our instructional video, we'll cover mold making and cement casting. First, we roll out clay to about a quarter inch thick, cut strips a couple inches wide to use as a barrier between the two halves of the plaster mold. Make sure that your plaster won't hang up on any part of your figure when you choose where to put the divider. You want it to be like a clamshell to open up without hanging up on any part of the animal. So choose your line of division carefully so that your plaster won't hang up on your mold. The rubber makes it a little more forgiving, but it's not completely forgiving. So choose that parting line carefully. Next, we mix the plaster. Put a couple inches of water, two, three inches of water in your, in your gallon bucket and sift plaster into the water until you get an island that doesn't melt into the water. You're just sifting in the plaster. After your island is stable, after you have a little island that's just barely melting around the edges, mix the plaster with your gloved hand Use cold water if you want the pot life, as they say, the pot life to be long. Use hot water if you want it to set up quick. That first layer of plaster is going to go on very thin, which again is a good thing. It gives it, um, uh, it means it flows into the crevices better. And just keep pushing it up over the rubber. But your plaster is going to start to thicken up now. It's going to start to set. It'll get a little warm. It'll get thicker. You can see that. Uh, keep smoothing it on. Try to get at least two inches of plaster on all the parts of your mold. Uh, you really don't want to break this plaster mold when you're unmolding it. Plaster will take just a couple hours to set up enough to do the second half. Leave it overnight for strength, but for just doing this second half, you can, do, you can just wait an hour or so and it'll be set. So you pull the clay out, pull out the clay, clay barrier, and then you use Vaseline, that's what I'm smearing on here. Vaseline goes on the edge of the plaster, that margin. Make sure it's well covered in, in, its, in its entirety with Vaseline. And you mix up a fresh batch of the plaster. Try to find a good molding plaster. Plaster of Paris is not really hard enough for this kind of work. If that's all you can find, because that's all that Menards has, you can use it, but then make it a little thicker because uh, plaster of Paris is not very strong. If you look on the web for what's called molding plaster, you'll find a better quality plaster like this stuff. Now we're gonna do exactly what we did on the other side, being sure not to lap over the top margin with your plaster. You don't wanna you know, bind it in there. And again, about two inches thick to make sure that it's a durable mold. Now this, at this stage, you want to wait uh, overnight because the plaster gets stronger when it sits. And you don't want to break the mold when you're unmolding it. You, you really don't want to do that. So make sure that you have full strength plaster by leaving it overnight before you unmold it. Even though you'll be really eager to see it, be patient. And it might take a little bit of convincing to pull the plaster off. There's our old old friend, the rubber mold. It's, it's still in there. You notice I'm using a pry bar. That's the best way to get some leverage on this stuff. Okay. Now we're going to peel off the rubber mold. And uh, the rubber mold, fortunately, doesn't stick uh, very, you know, very well to wood. So you can use a plywood base, and it's not going to stick to that. <laughs> this is why they call it a glove mold. You take it off like taking off a glove. Bloop! And there's our, there's our otter friend back again. Usually the mold process leaves your clay pretty well intact. So if you have any further use for a little clay otter, you can do it. Now what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off rough bits of the rubber mold that might catch in the cement. It might catch in the, uh, the cast cement and uh, hang up. You don't want anything to hang it up. So you rinse it off, clean off that clay as well as you can. 
Don't leave any clay jammed in the eyeballs or the ears or anything like that. Okay, now we have the rubber mold and the plaster mold. You need to reassemble it. Reassemble it in the same conformation as you put it together. In other words, put the base down, put the mold right over the rubber mold, just the way it was when it was around the clay. Make it nice and tight. And then you band it up. These giant rubber bands you can get, again, online. <laughs> um, you can find all this stuff pretty easily on Amazon. Um, giant rubber bands work real well for banding the mold together, but you can also use shock cords, bungee cords. And then you prop it up because obviously you're pouring a semi-liquid substance into the mold, so you want it to be level, but you also want to make sure that any, uh, part, that all parts of the mold, the, the concrete can flow into. Okay, now here are the components of the concrete. We have sand. We have fine aggregate, not the great big gravel aggregate that you, usual, that you usually find in concrete, but you buy, buy a different aggregate. Quarter inch at the most, crushed limestone is the best. Um, small scale aggregate. And then we have the cement, white Portland cement, that is. Well, you should be able to get that pretty much anywhere, white Portland cement. Now this is uh, chopped fiberglass roving, which will really increase the strength of the, uh, really increase the strength of the concrete. It's a, it's a great addition, but it doesn't take much, very little. Uh, we'll go over the recipe for this concrete. So three quarts of fine aggregate, four quarts of playground sand, and two quarts of white Portland cement. Mix in then a quarter cup of fiberglass chopped roving. It's, they make it for concrete. You want to use the stuff that's made for concrete. So first mix the dry ingredients really thoroughly with your gloved hands. Then add approximately one pint to two pints of water to get the proper consistency. That seems like a lot of variation, but concrete really varies in how much water it will absorb. Um, it's almost like flour in bread dough. Add just enough water to make it flowable, but not too much that it's too liquidy. Too much water means weak concrete, but too little water means it doesn't flow into the details of your piece. So you have to find that sweet spot. It should, it should liquefy when you vibrate it. And it should be solid if you squeeze a piece of it in your hand. That's kind of how you tell. So here we are pouring it into the mold. You can hand place it. Work your hand down into the detailed parts of the mold to make sure that that concrete is getting where it needs to go. When you, unmold, when you unmold a piece and the concrete hasn't made it all the way down into the bottom, it's pretty sad. So make sure that it's flowing to fill every bit of that mold. Okay, there's our little wire bracing for the tail piece. If you have fragile bits, um, put a little wire or rod in to reinforce the concrete. This is a small piece, and so you don't need a lot of bracing. You notice I'm overflowing the tail join to the body because that's going to be vulnerable. You don't want that tail sticking out all on its own. You want it joined to the body by at least a film of concrete. You can always remove those kind of concrete webs after you unmold it, but you want to have it in there for safety. Now, what you want is you want to get the bubbles out, and that's always hard. The best way to get bubbles out of concrete is to vibrate it, to shake it. You can shake it from the surface with your hand, like this, in this lovely speeded up video, or you can shake it by shaking the entire mold, and that will uh, shake it a little bit, just gently shake it until no more bubbles rise to the surface. And now you want to leave this again for a good 24 hours um, so that you are sure that the concrete is reaching strength 
before you try to unmold it. You don't want to break pieces off just because you're impatient. So this is the next day. <laughs> you can chip off the little bits of concrete that are going to try to hold it in the mold. Turn it over. Take off the straps. Pull off the plaster. Oh, it can be harder to pull it off when it's in concrete and not clay. Concrete is completely unforgiving. It is stone, remember. Um, now we get to see what we got. What do we have in here? Did the concrete fill the mold? Or will we be surprised? <laughs> oh, it's really stuck in one of those little spots. I didn't cut enough of the mold material off. Oh, there it comes. And there we are. And yes, he did fill. <laughs> so there's our little white boy. And uh, next, we'll be coloring it with acid stains. But we need to leave him for about a week uh, so that he, uh, he develops a, a lime coating on the outside. And that's what the acid stains will act on. Anne Clefstead is a fiscal year 2021 recipient of a Creative Support for Individuals grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board. This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. <laughs> 